Well, welcome sales professionals looking to gain traction in your marketplace. Obviously, these sessions rely or assume that you do have a foothold in your marketplace and you're looking to build upon that. No doubt, um, with what's transpiring at the moment, it seems that nobody sort of, with the exception of uh, Western Australia, uh, some degree, uh, Adelaide, and then, of course, Queensland seem to have dodged a bullet for the moment. But in all and all of us in one way, shape or form have been affected by the fallout of COVID. And today I want to talk about prospecting in, in particular leverage and even more importantly, the fact that always remains. I think that what I see salespeople do almost invariably is, you know, once an obstacle pops up, particularly if it's a new obstacle, you, when, and there's no blame game being played here, but we tend to want to blame the obstacle for the lack. I mean, to me, that's no different when somebody says that the market condition is dictating their outcomes. I can't begin to tell you how much I relied upon the fact that my competition would be looking at the market condition and would take solace in that and the lack of results. I cannot begin to tell you how much I also relied on the fact that they would wait for something to happen. Never underestimate the power or the understanding around taking action in a premeditative fashion. The fact still remains, doesn't matter what market I'm looking at, I mean, even, even if I go down into Melbourne markets where right now, and there's a couple of, uh, uh, of our, our clients to be listening to this, <laughs> it is rather draconian. I mean, they are not permitted to show properties in any way, shape or form. They can't even have photographers go to the property and prepare the marketing for that, for that particular property. That's, of course, assuming it's listed. And yeah, there's, uh, there's the opportunity to perhaps run listing presentations online, which we'll talk about that in, in a moment and exploit it. But, you know, it's, 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 you really can't do much. Now, of course, if you looked at that by comparison, comparatively speaking, if you're in New South Wales, there are severe restrictions in place. We are now, in terms of lockdown, in our 11th week. So 10 weeks behind us into the 11th week of lockdown. And there is promise that it, this will come to an end. This will come to an end at the end of this month, perhaps early in, in, in the following. But, you know, I like to assume the worst and hope for the best. And I look at it and I say, well, hang on. What we've had is a change here, a significant change. We are learning to get around it. Why don't I just run the assumption that it's going to stay and still look for the opportunity on that assumption? If, of course, it doesn't and it frees up, well, then there's still an advantage to be had. But if you look, particularly in the beginnings of this, as it might, might um, or may or may not appear, in and around prospecting, I have to say that the reality is that people will still be selling. People will still be buying. And of course, that's representative anyway, because there's lots of them that have indicated as such. And we've been left with what is appears to be an undersupplied market at present. Now, I've tipped all the way along that those market conditions will alter. I'm still of that assumption. But what we've got to do is adapt and react to the situation that we have currently, and we've got to keep the continuity flowing. And I think the best way to start with what I would like to get across to most of us this morning in terms of traction is stop looking at this market condition, stop looking at the market that you are dealing with from your perspective, and just spare a thought and look at it from the perspective 
of the people that you are dealing with, with the clients. And I do hope that you've actually got something in front of you whereby you can take some notes because it's that old thing when you write something down and you feed it back to yourself, feed it back to this gray matter inside that it gets at construction of some sort of game plan and hopefully alters your focus from where it is at the moment. Because one thing never changes, and I know that many of you might be tired of hearing me say this, but what you focus on grows. If you focus on the lack of prospective sellers, that will grow in your mind's eye and you will be the victim of scarcity. If you focus on the fact that there are a significant, and I'll say that again slowly, that there are a significant number of prospective sellers out there and you allow your mind's eye to focus on that, then you will see that there are sellers there. Now, granted, you might be thinking, well, there's not as many as there were, but I don't look at this like that. I mean, for me, it's always been, you know, if there are less sellers out there, this will not adversely affect me. It will adversely affect my competitor because I'm still having the same slice of the pie that I always wanted. The competitors, they'll have to put up with a smaller slice of the pie. Now, if you look at this from the perspective of the seller, and what we've got to do is start appealing to their sense or satisfying their needs from a professional perspective. Now, if you look at it from the seller's perspective at the moment, they're, they're, they're pretty much worn down. They'd have to be at the fed up stage. I mean, imagine being a buyer having been looking in the last four to six weeks, still not finding being able to locate something. You'd be in an anxious state. You'd be, I, I believe, almost panicking that you may not be able to find anything at all. Now, granted, some of those buyers are already in properties and they're just waiting to find something so they can go ahead and buy. Again, we have to stimulate activity around this as well. But let's just say that they are at the end of their tether and they are starting to be worn down by COVID, by the fallout, by lockdown. People are, their mental health is now becoming questionable. You can only confine people for so long. A lot of our liberties have been taken from us. And at the end of the day, we start to get worried. But I say that it has to reach a point in inevitably where it clears up, where the fog lifts and we move forward. The future, as I say, and I hope you're taking notes, the future arrives. So we may come out of this lockdown at the end of, this month we may not and it might be extended or at least there might be you know the restrictions might ease but there might still be other restrictions that still make it difficult to function in the way that we've come largely accustomed to but the future eventually arrives so i hope you all accept that eventually it will lift the fog will lift and when the fog lifts when the lockdown lifts when the restrictions lift if you look at it from the perspective of the seller, whose arms are they going to fall into? Are they going to fall into the arms of the real estate agent that took a temporary holiday, that backed off completely, that wasn't following them up, that wasn't supplying good information, that wasn't talking them down, as you'll hear me say in a second, back off the wall and, and, and telling them not to freak out, that everything's okay. Um, or will they go for the agent that during this restrictive period was talking good common sense to them, telling them that it's going to be okay, building a solid rapport with them, demonstrating their financial capacity, exposing them to the products and services that they have available and giving them the confidence they need to just push the property into the hands of that agent. Now, there's going to be others that you won't see, you won't meet at the end of this restriction because some agents with the initiative right this very second to show them the way through this, they've managed to take that seller by the hand, get them on the market in whatever restrictive environment exists 
and indeed introduce a buyer to them and get them sold. Now, as crazy as what I'm about to say to you is going to sound, this is where the shortcoming comes into place. When agents are engaging in prospecting activity in terms of leverage, so you've got listings. Again, here at um, Sales Trainer Online, the List and Sell Tour Online, we are running the assumption that you are in traction, that you do have listings or you have had listings come on. Now, most of you, those of you that have definitely had listings come on, I'm, I'm imagining they've sold because the list to sell ratio has been high. In all markets, there is no exceptions to this. There's been more buyers than there have been available property. So they've managed to sell. And the legacy of that is probably been an unprecedented number of sellers, say it again, of sellers that have inquired in and around that property but you maybe haven't identified them as yet. So you've had huge volumes of sales inquiry. Yes, there's a lot more buyers than there are sellers, but you've had huge volumes. Now, when I talk back to real estate salespeople and, and, and I'm having this discussion with them, they're telling me that, you know, the, there's a large number of people that have indicated that they, yes, they have a property to sell, but only in the event that they're able to find something. Then they go on to tell me that the conversion ratios aren't that good. Well, I'm here to tell you something very, very important. The conversion ratios are static. They, are, they ring true. They run true. If you're not getting the conversion numbers from the sales inquiry you've had on previous properties, well, in the first instance, it can only mean you're not calling them. But in the second, it can also mean that whatever you're doing and saying is not conducive to that prospect revealing to you in the first instance that they do indeed have a property to sell at some stage. And then in the second instance, they're not having any confidence whatsoever in discussing this with you because you seemingly are very one dimensional in what you're seeking from them. You see in prospecting far too often, I see this as the first instance that the salesperson is coveting the listing presentation, let me just change that. They're coveting a market appraisal. They are focused on getting down there to do a market appraisal. And whether you want to believe this or not, the moment you say market appraisal to me, that tells me that your pitch must be price centric, that you are focused on getting down to discuss price with them, to discuss the, the property in the context of getting it on the market and buyers you have and how quickly it can be done or how slowly it can be done or what premium it, it can, be get, can be done at. Understand this, these people are selling. And if you have not framed up a relationship that is centric to you in your professional capacity, caring about their entire disposition around selling, then you're really not going to have any joy. What do I mean? Well, when I look at the way calls frame up with sellers, it's basically in prospecting. So if somebody's an agent's calling back past sales inquiry. Well, for a start, they'll usually focus on stuff that's more recent rather than stuff that's more matured. Now, I've already identified for you on many, many occasions that the best time to actually contact any sales inquiry in terms of prospecting is those that are at least four weeks old. But I need to also say this, it kind of, it kind of, um, it's no longer on the vine. It's not just drop fruit, it's rotting fruit. Once you get past about 12 weeks. So the numbers, the ratios are going to drop off, but that window between the fourth week and the 12th week is optimum. Now, if you, if you call people and you are, committing to the right approach along with the right dialogue, then you'll get the answer that you want. Yet what I see with salespeople in practice when they're, when they're jumping on is all they want to do as quickly as they plausibly can is qualify. So they want to qualify whether or not that prospective buyer inquiry is the way they frame it is also a seller. So whether or not they've got something to sell, 
the moment they hear the word got something to sell, they cannot help themselves other than trying to focus immediately on some form of presentation, whether it be a quasi listing presentation, but it is usually formulated around appraisal that do you want me to come down and give you an idea on price and where you're going? Now, I was talking to someone the other day, and those of you that have seen the film, The Castle, uh, I might be pre you know, dating myself uh, out of the game here with some of the young pups, but inside the castle, there is uh, a scene where Farouk, and they're talking about going to court and, you know, uh, they're talking about, you know, going to it and how much it's going to cost each of them. Farouk can't help himself. He gets his money out and he says, I give you money. And uh, there's a Bill Kernigan turns around. And he says, put your money away. What the fuck? What is it with wogs and cash? We'll get to the point. Now, you might say, how does that parallel with what I'm speaking? Well, it's pretty simple. Stop talking about presentation the moment you have qualified a prospect. Put your presentation away. Yes, you'll get to the presentation, but you have to have given or made some sort of professional connection in the first place and offered something of value, offered something of substance. Understand that when you're ringing a prospect back, at this stage, you have nothing or you have given nothing to that prospect in their capacity as a seller that would give them, offer them any value in return for them surrendering the information. So you're kind of on the back foot. And I see this all the time. So they want to qualify, they want to move to an appraisal or some sort of form of quasi, as I said, presentation. Then they move in and around price and trying to win the listing. And then talk about motive comes later. Please write this down and understand this in terms of the context of the conversations, and there it is for the first time, you have to develop strong conversations with these prospective sellers. And you need to do it now, and you need to build and formulate that relationship. Some of these people, no matter what you do or say with them, are not going to come to market until this, um, these restrictions via the lockdowns are lifted completely. But when they are lifted, they're going to look to the, to the salespeople that formulated a relationship on the right basis. And the premise of that is basically caring in that it needs to be centric to the motive. So in order, what I focus on is qualifying whether or not that person is, in fact, a prospective seller. The moment they do, I do not go into a state of panic. I remain completely calm because I've now identified them. Once they're identified, I then move to the motive. Where are you moving from? Where are you moving to? Tell me about the property that you are seeking. Yes, I will enter into protracted discussions with what is seemingly a buyer, mainly because they've indicated to me that they are actually a seller and remembering that listing always comes before selling. Once I've established that motive, once that relationship has been spawned around and is centric to their motive, I will then move in with advice, not price. I had someone say to me yesterday, you know, should we send them information such as a CMA? Absolutely. Uh, well, isn't that dangerous in quoting a price? I said, I didn't say send them a CMA and give your opinion on price, especially if it's sight unseen. I said, give them the information that they need around sales that have occurred so they can formulate their own opinion as to where the price sits. You need to sit on the periphery as an advisor on the best way to tackle the situation. So you're talking upbeat around what's going on inside the market and the positivity that might be in there. For example, my guy in Melbourne that I just spoke about, I just mentioned to you, they themselves just recently sold a property to a buyer without that buyer visiting the property. Then they proceeded to do a listing presentation online and have successfully listed that 
owner's house for sale. This agent has never shook the hand or met in person with this buyer seller, yet we are conducting business with them. This is a great story of positivity to tell other sellers when they jump on. So you can imagine in a sea of negativity, in, a, in an environment where the restrictions are so draconian that the, you know, agents aren't permitted to show or sell property, this agent is now a standout because we simply move down the facets of the prospecting the way that we should. Qualify, identify, move to motive, give advice, then show product and then hopefully move into a listing presentation of their invitation rather than of your solicitation. I'll say that again slowly, that you are seeking to do listing presentations by invitation rather than solicitation. Now, I know this kind of in some ways defies what I'm saying, but you see, we just come across as too over earnest in trying to secure that presentation rather than focusing first on the building of a strong relationship around rapport. And how do you build a relationship around rapport? And I've said this over and over and over again, by listening, by being attentive around motive. Stop worrying about how quickly you can get down there to see someone, but you just say, where are you going? Where are you off to? And keep the conversation centric to the client and how they're feeling to the client and their interpretation of what's going on in COVID and give them some positive spin on that. To the client, to the property itself, to their property, where they're at with it, how they feel about it. And then of course, to the move, to what they're trying to do the other end and keep talking about the plausible reality of them being able to achieve that move inside of a comfortable time frame. If you're having somewhere between five to 10 of these conversations a day, I can almost invariably guarantee you that not only will you be listing properties now, not only will you be given invitation to come down and run presentations, whether it be online or whether it be in person, but as the lockdown clears, you will be connected with an oversupply of opportunities. And most of those, those that you've built rapport with will look at you favorably against the competition. So you will walk into a sea of productivity. Now, if you're talking to these people cold, how do you actually push this through? Again, if you're actually stumbling across various sources where you're speaking to people for the first time in and around that you've not met, you want to do business with, but you're not able to do it, just stick to these types of questions. I just say, well, when are you planning on moving? Or, you know, given that you might know if it's a sales inquiry and you know they have, I just say to them, you know, where, if you could move, if you could right now, where would you move to and when might that be? Develop conversation around the motive. Develop conversation around what they're trying to do this demonstrates clearly that you have empathy for what they're trying to do, and this will build the relationship. The relationship is not spawned by you giving. And again, even though you've heard me say many, many times, listing is not selling. There is a framework, you know, um, the safest and most practical way to go about a sale is to get your property on the market. Yeah. Find a buyer, you find a house, match the prices, buy house, sell house. Even so, keep that quiet until the opening is there inside the relationship that you are spawning with this client. Once you've identified, once you've been through the discussions, initial discussions on motives, and before you get advice, then we have to keep the connection up. So we've made that conversation. We need a premise to continue that conversation. And we also need passive contact occurring with all of these potential sellers. So I say to them that you need to send them something like the property sellers research guide that we have. Or if you don't have one in your company, you might have a pre-listing kit of some sort. Get it out to them. Give them good solid advice. 
demonstrate to them how they can actually do some research on their property, even while COVID uh, lockdowns exist, in preparation to come onto the market. Send them a comparative market analysis, devoid of your opinion. You can't give one without seeing it, but you can still supply information at their request and be the vehicle that's giving that information. Put them on your SMS router and whatever results you're having, make sure that they're receiving those results, not all the time, but at least twice a week. Yeah, that they are seeing evidence of you continuing to sell properties. What about your accolades? You know, what, again, in these times, we forget to actually build the story to show the recommendation, the testimonial, importantly, the case study of people that are in similar situations to the ones that they are and be sending that case study to them. You know, I say this over and over again with marketing. Stop waiting for the seller to agree or comply or dictate how you should market a property. Rather, give them solid examples of people that have been through the same situation that they are and have taken your advice and have gravitated toward it. Give this to them. So we give them fantastic case studies that give them the confidence to see that if they go down this path, that they're in the right hands. What about getting around the lockdown? Now, this is something that we've been doing with great effect to our, our friends down in Victoria. Just because there's a cutoff doesn't mean that you can't continue to market property. So through Property Marketer, we have a thing called Two View websites. These are individual property websites. Granted, I know that you cannot at this stage be giving a seller professional photography. We can't get them out there. But there's a thing called an iPhone. And these things have amazing photographic capacity. Surely you can get your seller to provide you with some great photographs or as best they can these can be formulated onto a two view website this can then be distributed to buyers and i know it's not perfect marketing but anything's better than what they're not getting at the moment and this of course provides a medium and a platform for you to justify the idea of having it not so much as an off market because the property is now on market but you are communicating back with buyers and sellers so that's one way of promoting it. Secondly, that you need to be at the ready and be able to talk um, individually and identify buyers specifically for that property and be talking about it. Otherwise, you could end up the victim. You could end up in the fallout of one of your competitors presenting to them buyers that they have and you end up with the wrong end, end of the raspberry. So I say that you can move into the off market. You need to have your buyers categorized and be able to talk to them about buyers that you could bring to the property immediately or at the very least that you'll be able to bring to them the moment that those lockdown issues are removed. And what we should be doing in the interim is giving them information, giving them visual contact, allowing them to see as much as they possibly can of your property prior to. I openly explain to all of these sellers that the standoff is, is, is actually being caused by their attitude. What do you mean? Well, you're standing off because you're saying until you find something, you're not putting yours on and the buyer for yours, they're standing off too. So you're all standing off and this is causing a problem. At some stage, we all have to fess up and start to communicate with each other that we're looking to buy and sell. And that starts the whole interaction back into play. And you need to be the catalyst around this. Some things never change, people. And you need to understand this. Your job, your functionality inside of the real estate space is to find a seller, find a buyer, and match them up and actually stimulate activity inside the market. It is real simple. Now, at the moment, if you're not finding sellers, I'm not saying that they're not there. I'm just saying that you've not done enough. You've not communicated with them enough. You haven't established the relationships enough in the first instance for them to put their hand up and identify themselves. In the second, they're not having confidence in what you're doing and saying, yeah, if it is related to price or otherwise, to then 
have you connect with them on that platform. They're not ready to list, but if you demonstrate to them a path which makes perfect sense, they will in turn volunteer that information and they will actually invite you to take them by the hand, run into a listing presentation, sign that agency agreement and move forward. I cannot stress this message enough. Get on those phones, start communicating with sellers, and I'll just recap this so that you are very clear on it, so that we understand exactly what you need to do. You need to qualify, identify, focus on the motives, so then move to the motives, offer advice, not price, then start to show them the products that you have available and how you can, even in a makeshift fashion, market the property somewhat in an off-market sense to get it going, then you'll be invited into that presentation. It won't be solicitation, it will be invitation and you are well and truly on the way. Beyond that, you need to get together a communication system that backs up that initial call so that you have a balancing of passive contact as long, along with direct contact. You don't wanna overdo it with the direct contact, contact that's just going to look like badgering and you're pushing them away and you will build this list. And to your surprise, if you're there in there engaging every day, if you forcibly push yourself into a minimum quota, you'll suddenly find surprises where some of them will just give up and volunteer their property to you. And you'll just go, holy guacamole, all of a sudden I'm listing more properties again, despite the conditions that are prevailing around me. Yes, it's true. The harder you work, the luckier you, the luckier you get. Now, as I've told you many, many, many times before, I'm not into hard work, I'm into smart work, and I still am. This is smart work. But not engaging or allowing yourself to go on holiday around this is absolute lunacy. Because right now, in what looks like adversity, the opportunity is rife get in there and engage and start with your sales inquiry log. My name's Mark Dwyer. You can reach me on mark with a K at salestrainer.com.au or on my mobile phone number plus 61-410-592-165. Thanks very much for attending and I hope to see you um, Next week on the next instalment, when we talk more about the presentation and how we overcome this adverse situation, which of course is COVID-19.